The following is a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Left presents Shalom and welcome to our program. Miles and Catherine Weiss here coming to you from Israel. And we're so grateful to be able to bring you a look into what we have planned for 2015. You know, it doesn't ever get old. The story of the Lord is fresh every morning and God's mercy is new every morning. We love to bring you Christianity through Jewish eyes and it is never, never, never boring. It's really exciting. In <laughs> fact, one of the most exciting things is the reality of the prophetic time we're living in. We're looking forward to doing some programs on Bible prophecy. Let's take a look right now. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue in the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Zola Levin presents with Miles and Catherine Weiss. I do know for a fact that there are, that Iran has made significant uh, inroads uh, over the last 24 to 36 months in uh, as far as their short-range missile capabilities wow. that puts those Persian Gulf countries at risk. This is a great interest and a great concern to those countries because and that, that's from one of Israel's top missile experts, Uzi Rubin, who helped develop the uh, aero missile defense system. Uh, he's the one that said they have made incredible leaps in, in technology over the last few years. And that has a lot of people concerned. And then the ICBM is what uh, North Korea and Iran's working on that would put Europe, uh, as well as Russia and the United States at risk of a long-term or long-range future uh, nuclear uh, target. At the time when the Arab tsunami is sweeping more and more pro-American elements in the Arab world at a time when the Arab tsunami highlights the unpredictability, the unreliability, the treacherous, the violent, intolerant nature of the Arab Islamic Middle East. This is the time when Israel is more and more highlighted as the only stable and reliable and capable commercially and militarily, the only democratic and most importantly, the only unconditional ally of the U.S. And this nation's in trouble because of our our, our many sins, but one of our primary sins, I think, is uh, is a tendency to turn away from Israel, our, our dear uh, ally. That uh, I really believe that uh, Genesis chapter 12 is is going to be in effect for America very soon if we don't uh, uh, get back to blessing Israel. Imagine the Earth was destroyed and you traveled here from another planet and you found a dollar, and you saw in God we trust, and you said, well, what God were they talking about? If you interpreted it based on the symbolism on the U.S. dollar. You would interpret it as either a Greek or a Roman God. You would definitely not connect it to a biblical uh, Judeo or Christian God because there is no symbolism on the dollar that equates to that. Great seal itself, especially the reverse side of the great seal is very important because on the great seal there is a prophecy. It's from the Apollinean priestess, the Kume Sibyl. That's where the language Novus Ordo Seclorum is taken from, and it is a prophecy about the return of Apollo, Apollyon in the New Testament, who will return at the end of time and give birth to a new world order. What is coming here? Jesus says that let no man deceive you, many will come in my name. He also says that even the elect would be deceived if that were possible. Um, we read in 2 Thessalonians, Satan comes with all signs and lying wonders. So it gets to the point, what, is, what are we really looking at here? What is coming is unprecedented. 
And it will cause, in my opinion, this great deception, which says that E.T. created all life on Earth, that E.T. Um, genetically manipulated us, that E.T. started the world's civilizations, that E.T. created all the world's religions, and now, at this critical juncture in human history, E.T. has come to give us a DNA download upgrade. So much of Bible prophecy takes place right here in Jerusalem. Yeah, we really wanted to establish again for you the historical right of the Jews to be in the land and the future that God has for this place. In fact, the very place, the Holy of Holies, is called Hamakom, the place. Mm -hmm. And that's why we did a series that we're going to show you next year called Zion Forever. We're here on the southern steps. No question about it, this is one of those X marks the spot places. The first century steps are still here. We understand that Yeshua taught here and we see the massive Herodian stone going back to the time of the second temple. Above it, Suleiman's building from the 15th century. But no doubt about it, this is one of those places where so much of Bible history took place, especially at the time of Christ. One of the discoveries which was made here in the city of David is this Greek inscription carved into a block of stone. It was found by Vile at the beginning of the 20th century. Now this inscription is very important because it tells us something about Jerusalem, uh, the, the approach that people took to the temple and to the institution known as the synagogue. And it tells us also, um, there's a detailed description here, that this was a place where people who came from a great distance could stay here. So it was almost like an inn. And uh, this meant that Jewish pilgrims who came to Jerusalem would be able to stay in this building, which was located in this vicinity. And that then connects us to the Jesus story, because Jesus, of course, uh, found it very difficult to place uh, himself and his disciples within the city. They went to the upper room uh, in order to have the Last Supper together. Well, first of all, we're facing the southern wall of the Temple Mount. And uh, the southern wall was the most important wall during the Second Temple period because the greatest part of the population of Jerusalem lived further south in the city of David or Mount Zion, the southern part of Mount Zion. And so most of the people came to the Temple Mount through this side where there are two gates which are very famous, the one which is called the Triple Gate, which we see here, and another one which is the Double Gate. I have to say, I have to be frankly here, as, as a scholar, but as a secular person, yes. I very much believe in the Bible. I have no doubts about the existence of the story of the Bible. Mm -hmm. No doubts whatsoever, because whatever I see, historical documents Verified. proving things outside the Bible. Mm -hmm. The biblical story is being supported by two different academic lines. One of them is history, which is documents, and the other one is archaeology, which stands for its own, but then it needs to be interpreted. Yes. And we interpret it whatever we find. So if it goes along with documents, yes then we say bingo, no doubts are whatsoever. So if you have the book of Jeremiah being proved here with many, many chapters, if you've got things coming out from the time of Abraham, time of patriarchs, we are talking about a great astonishing to the world today. And as we move forward, yes. I expect many of the other stories to be proved as well. It's, it's quite easy as things are keeping, you know, popping out from the ground in the city of David. We have the evidence of the destruction of the first temple. We have arrowheads from the destruction that the Babylonians uh, uh, fired on the, on the temple. We have a broken or smashed a small figurines, mm -hmm. clay figurines, mm -hmm. uh, terracotta figurines we call them, yes. that, uh, uh, that attest the, the, um, the activity of uh, King uh, uh, Joash, yes. who, who said that, that he smashed all the molten images. Uh -huh. And, and uh, we have many of them. You know, it's so important for our viewers to see the next generation yeah. understanding Israel. Think about what Zola started 30 plus years right. ago, but it's important the kids get this, right. isn't it? Right, well, when you, t when you handle the things of the, of the first and second century, I mean, these are like the rocks are literally speaking to these people about their history, their yes. heritage, and the, and the temple that was here. It's so exciting to see their faces as they find these finds. It's amazing. Yes, it is. You know, it's so important for us, too. We want the message of Christianity through Jewish eyes and the relevance of the state of Israel. We want it to go to the next generation. It's a passion for us. We have children in college. One just graduated. It's so exciting for us to see kids 
understanding the importance of Israel, the importance of their Jewish heritage. This is the city named after David himself, but we first hear about this city in the book of Samuel as the fortress of Zion. There's where we are first introduced to this city. So first and foremost, this is Zion. When you talk about Jerusalem, you're talking about Zion. Now Zion becomes synonymous for the whole country later on, but Zion originally starts here, and it is the fortress of Zion that David conquers when he comes here approximately the year 1000. What we're looking at behind us is the destruction era of 586, when, of course, all of Israel goes to Babylon. But when we talk about Zion and the heart of David, we can imagine it right here, because David's palace was somewhere above us, and these were sort of the upper echelon houses that existed at that time. We know that David looked from his palace and sinned with Bathsheba. We know that his longing was from above, and that's really the heart of God. God longs for Zion. Just the way it says here in the book of Psalms, I'm reading from Psalm 132, for the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. And it's really a picture for us of the battle between Mashiach and Hasatan, the adversary, the accuser of the brethren. It's an epic battle that looks forward to the defeat of the devil himself. Isn't it amazing that David, uh, a shepherd, was born in Bethlehem. Right. Yeshua, a shepherd of people, was born in Bethlehem. And it had to be so, because the prophet Micah said in 5.2, you, Bethlehem, even though you're the least among the cities of Israel, out of you will come he whose goings forth have been from everlasting to everlasting, speaking of Messiah. He had to be of the house of David, he had to be of the tribe of Judah, and he had to be Yeshua HaMashiach. There is no other. You know, David was anointed three times privately by Samuel in Bethlehem, and then by the men of Judah a little later in the story, and then finally by the elders of Israel. And here's a parallel that you may not hear elsewhere. Jesus also was anointed three times in the womb by the angel Gabriel. He was called into being. And then by the river in front of John the Baptist, Yohanan Hamid Fiel, John the Immerser, he was, he was anointed before men. And then finally, at the time of the ascension, he was anointed with the oil of joy above his fellows. He is the King of Kings. David, Melech Yisrael, pictures the coming Mashiach. Hello, I'm Wayne Fournier, and I've been a supporter of Zola Levitt Ministries for many years. If you see this outreach as worthy of your financial support, please call us at 1-800-WONDERS. Visit us online at levitt.com or write to us at Zola, Box 12, 268, Dallas, Texas, 75225. We depend on your financial sustenance. Thank you. You know, we want to thank you for your gifts of funds. We really depend on them, and we know that you are faithfully giving. And if you've ever thought about giving, would you, would you just go ahead and just send in something small or big or whatever God puts on your heart? It helps us to bring you these these shows from the land of Israel it, with the Jewish perspective in yeah. the Holy Land. It's really true. One of the greatest series we've done is called The Journey of Restoration, which parallels the restoration of Israel and actually follows us on a tour. We want to rebroadcast that in 2015 because we want you to have a chance to see Israel as our pilgrims see it. And of course, we always want to invite you to come with us, but we can't do any of this without your help. So. Thank you for your gifts of funds, and let's go now to a clip from the Journey of Restoration. I love Israel, I love the people. Totally so, uh, it's indescribable. It feels like home. It just feels like home. Welcome to Jerusalem. It was, just took my breath away. Yeah. It just shows the, the fingerprint of God everywhere. To realize how special the city and the people were to the Lord. It's God's chosen land, and Jesus walked on it. I think there's a restoration, as Pastor Miles talked about. How God is really gathering 
the Jews in. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we've been grafted in, and, and uh, now this is, this is our city also. In the southern part of Israel is the Arava, a valley that stretches from the Dead Sea to the Red Sea. In modern times, this valley divides Israel and Jordan. In Bible times, the area just east of here was Edom, which in Hebrew means red. You can see traces of that color in the landscape as we enter Timna Park. Timna is the site of the very first copper mine. Thousands of ancient mining shafts have been found here, as well as remains of smelting furnaces dating back to ancient imperial Egypt. A life-size replica of the biblical tabernacle stands in the middle of the park where the guide, Marco Sa'ad, meets our group. Jesus was our perfect sacrifice. He was the last sacrifice. Because of Jesus, we don't have to bring any more animals or bring any more sacrifice, right? This whole tabernacle was like a God's plan for salvation, right, through Jesus. Our next stop is inside the tabernacle. This is the holy place, and here we find some wonderful types and shadows of the coming Messiah. So this area, it's called HaKodesh, which means the holy. Only the priests were allowed to be inside. We see there's different rings of holiness, right? We have the courtyard, which only the priests and Levites were allowed to be inside. In here, after the second curtain, only the priests and then after the third curtain, in the Hall of Holies, it's only the high priest, only once a year. We keep moving forward in the restoration, moving towards this great gift. In 1948, when this gift was given, the scrolls were discovered. The same time, a young man named Billy Graham was released full time into his ministry and went around the world as the greatest evangelist in the modern era. God's restoring the Jewish people, He's restoring the church. He's growing Israel, He's growing the believers. There's a shared destiny that He's always looking at that's leading to the Bride of Christ. As our group gathered for prayer, there was little question that after 2,000 years, you could still sense the Lord's presence in this quiet little grove of olive trees. Just knowing that He suffered the way He suffered and even His closest people with Him fell asleep in the process of that. Hey, the agony of that is like, oh, you know. So it's, it's a, this is a very peaceful place, but it's only peaceful because he came here and made it peaceful. Hey, it's so awesome to be here where Jesus was, where he agonized and knew what was coming, and yet he went on the head and died on the cross for us. Blessed are you when they would revile you and then persecute you and would say all manner of evil against you falsely because of me. You must continually rejoice and be extremely joyful because your reward is great in the heavens. For in this way they persecuted the prophets, the ones who went before you. Amen. Amen. One of the most exciting projects we have coming up this year is the story of Joseph. This series has been close to my heart. We've wanted to do it for a long time because we really see that there's a parallel between Joseph and Jesus in the Bible that is so important for our Jewish family and friends to know that Yeshua is Mashiach, that he is the Jewish Messiah. I know you're used to seeing Catherine with me. We thought we'd do something a little bit different now. And I'd like you to meet our Joseph. Uh, our young actor, Yitzhak Cohn, who plays Joseph in our upcoming series. Yitzhak, welcome. Thank you, Miles. Tell us a little bit about your acting background. Thank you for inviting me, Miles. Um, basically, I was learning acting for um, two years, mm. um, five years ago. Mm -hmm. And as I came to faith, um, I got lost uh, in the acting life, actually, basically. Because we didn't, in, in Israel, you don't have much um, acting or drama or anything else. Uh -huh. um, and then I found this uh, messianic body that creates every two years uh, actually a big, big musical show. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they have it for once in a year, uh, one time, in yes. two years actually. Yes. And um, I had the privilege to play in uh, one story, which is Noah's Ark. Mm. Um, and it was great. Yeah. It was it's interesting that uh, the, the believers, what, it's such a great 
possibility, so much potential for the mm. believers to tell the story of Yeshua through drama right here in the land, just as we do on television. And uh, you're able to be part of that. Tell us about being in Joseph. What's this experience been like? Uh, wow. <laughs> um, sometimes you say to yourself, oh, I wish I could live in that time. <laughs> And sometime like oh, I couldn't live in that time, uh -huh. so I was uh, I was actually had both of these uh, thoughts. Yes. And um, during this process, um, I could see more closely um, realize actually what Joseph been passing, but mm. actually what happened with Jesus. Yes. And although what happened with Jesus didn't finish yet, mm. so it's the Jesus is like the story of the whole world. Yes. And Joseph is only the story of his own family. Yes. But the symbols, it's almost correct. Almost yeah. one to it's one on each other. Yeah. Basically. So. It, it's really the time right now for the the Salvers, the native born Israelis to mm. recognize that Jesus is Jewish mm. and that the story is Jewish yeah. and that he's Mashiach. And that I feel like this is a great opportunity for them to see that. You 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 uh, tell us a little bit about what it was like to get put in a pit. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> you know, all the time you think, oh, I, I can't imagine what Jesus passed, mm -hmm. what might happen there, mm -hmm. and, and how, how he could actually suffer that much. Mm -hmm. um, and to put myself, to put myself in Joseph position, yes. and to have my brothers mm -hmm. putting me in that pit, mm -hmm. my brothers, mm -hmm. my close one, yes. it's awful, yeah. it's, it's crazy, and, and you cannot understand them, because actually family is supposed to be the one who protects you, yes. not the one who attacked you. Yes. So, this whole story, it's... It's full of God, and it really <laughs> looks forward to the time when our people, when the Jewish people will recognize, mm -hmm. nationally recognize yeah. Mashiach. Yeah. We're really looking towards that. Yeah. I want to ask you something about as a believer in the land, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's our privilege to come and to show America, show the West what mm -hmm. goes on here. But as a believer, is there something you'd like to say to either the church or America in general, just as someone who's born here, become, came to faith here, mm -hmm. just look right in the camera and, t and tell, tell our friends at home what, what, uh, what any message you have for them. Right. Okay, guys, um, you need to understand that basically the Messianic body here in Israel is getting growing and uh, many believers from America mm -hmm. with Jewish background coming and make Aliyah, which is great. Um, we don't have much of the world of, um, of drama, acting. We're starting growing in the music industry, but we actually, um, I'm thankful for what you're doing here, which is great. It's still a bit, but it's, uh, it's the open gate to make something even bigger. Yeah. And, um, and I think with the time, we're going to have more and more um, believers, even actors, uh, playing in Bible stories. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for being with us today. I think that uh, people getting to know you will, it will actually make the story come more alive as they see you as Joseph. So we appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. And we want to take you now and show you some highlights from this upcoming series about Joseph. Let's go there now. בראש מצרים חשב אותנו למרגלים, הכניס את כולנו לכלף, וכעת מחזיק שם בשמעון עד אשר נשוב אנו. The language of Hebrew is so pictorial, it's so expressive, it's so poetic. Yes. And even in this situation that Joseph is in, the word Mashiach, anointed one yes. is so close to the word the name given to him by Potiphar and by the jail overseer there was a spiritual connection that God was bringing for the people in, in you know the brothers yes the famine was alienation it means being subtracted from or away from God but all the people that God has regathered all the Jewish people are being brought back to his land and being put into his plan. We're standing here with the Al-Aqsa Mosque behind us. The sons of Esau have built that mosque on the land given to the sons of Jacob. And that envy, that jealousy is still being played out in our lives today here in Israel and around the world. Thank you. 
I know you enjoyed that interview with Yitzchak Cohen and also seeing some scenes from our Joseph series. We waited long to do that because we were looking for the funds to come in. We're so grateful because of your faithfulness we were able to make that series. Yeah, we really want to thank you for standing with Israel, for standing with us. You know, it's a valid thing to do and we know that you know that his return is soon. So let's continue the work while it is yet day. Yeah, that's really perfect. You know, we know that the Jewish roots of Christianity is such an important message. We want the West to understand where the Christian faith comes from and we want the West to stand with Israel and we need you to help us to do that. So we want to thank you again for all you've done and we ask you to do some more in this coming year. This is going to be one of the best year yet and you know we like to always remind you that this is about praying for the peace of Jerusalem and so we say Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of my Israel moved his mighty arm and he brought us back from Egypt and the whole world knows that our God has brought us home and we pray for peace yes we pray shalu shalom lay 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 yes the whole world knows that our God has brought us home and we pray for peace yes we pray shalu shalom all the world will ascend to Jerusalem. They will sing hallelujah, amen. They'll give thanks for the peace of Jerusalem. Peace on earth and goodwill to all men. And the whole world knows that the God of Israel moved his mighty arm and he brought us back from everywhere the whole world knows that our God has brought us home and we pray for peace yes we pray shalom shalom lay 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 yes the whole world knows that our God has brought us home and we pray for peace yes we pray shalom shalom